This is an after action report for winter field day 2020. It's a couple days after and I've put some thoughts together on lessons learned. We were one Oscar in North Texas. I had a friend from the club come over and operate digital. It was nice to have somebody else there and to help out and talk to. And nice to have him operate digital because I don't. I've, I operated the CW and phone and he operated the digital station. And we just traded off. We had two radios. We trade off since we were one Oscar. Uh, one overarching theme here is for down south, it was not a very wintry winter field day. We were, uh, let's see, Saturday morning, upper 30s, but it got up to 61. And then it was very mild that night into Sunday. It was quite mild, 50s probably. And so... One thing about that is for folks who don't operate outside very often, especially up north, uh, put some thought into having a shelter of some sort if it's going to be very cold because sitting around and not having blood moving gets cold very fast, especially if windy and wind chill, as you know, and then to make sure to layer property and fingers can be an issue. I've had my fingers get so cold, even with some thin gloves on when I'm doing CW that it's hard to feel them. That wasn't the case this year or for this event. We didn't operate QRP. We just, uh, we operate between 20, 20 and 100 watts, uh, depending on what mode and when. It's kind of nice to have a big stick sometimes. I had a short video I just put up about the antennas and those worked out really well. We got very good signal reports, our 20 meters up, half a wavelength, and so, uh, in fact, when we started on 20 meters, uh, we all we had were the coasts. That's it. I think we just had so much gain, and, and it was up high enough that we got a low enough angle that we weren't getting anything in the middle on 20 meters. Uh, it was just the coast. South Florida, Florida, and California, very, very heavy. And then to the northeast was well on 20 meters as well. 40 meters, we had our antenna up 40 feet, so obviously well below a half wavelength. And we still got some good reports. I Checking the reverse beacon network, I had a couple reports into 40 dB, and I don't think I've ever had that. One was almost 50 dB, 30 sure, into the 30s, but that's a, that's a, lot, of, a lot of power over the noise floor, so... And uh, then we, anecdotally, we also had people telling us we had good signals. And so that was nice and, and a change. <laughs> One interesting thing is, uh, I learned a lot on this, was on 80 meters at night, um, the question is, which is better uh, to do, to try 80 meter, a 40 meter dipole up at 40 feet, just like that, or the end fed, 60 foot end fed up at 17 feet. And I knew that the because the 40 meter dipole is not a half wavelength, we're at essentially a quarter wavelength, but feeding it at the center, it's going to be a very high impedance. And even on digital, we could not make contacts on it. I made one CW contact on 80 meters on that 40 meter dipole. The, the 60 foot end fed in inverted L position did much much better for transmitting now for receive the 40 meter dipole was was worlds better but for transmitting we couldn't get anything except for that one cw contact and so that was quite interesting this year seven megahertz at night didn't seem as busy and 80 meters seemed busier but maybe it's just because i could hear more with the 40 meter antenna CW didn't, as a general proposition, I didn't think there was as much CW this year. And uh, phone was very heavy. There was a lot of phone contacts. We tried six meters and used this. I have a homebrew. This is half inch a copper pipe used for elements. And I just made a choke ballon there. But the six meter did... Uh, we got one contact. We put a lot of effort into it, made one contact, and that was an FM contact with the Richardson Wireless Club, uh, K5 uh, RWK. I imagine they made a lot of contacts. I think they were for Oscar. 
Uh, so those were my thoughts on the antennas generally. We, we didn't have any success on 15 meters, put some real effort into that on CW, digital, and phone, and just didn't have any luck. I didn't even try 10. If 15 wasn't working, we didn't try 10 meters. Shame on me, we didn't do two meters. We, we set up late. And last year, one of my goals was to set up and get going on time. Well, that didn't happen. We didn't, my friends start operating at about 45 minutes after start time. And I wasn't ready until over two hours after just dealing with kids and family things and being slower than anticipated. So that's another learning lesson. We switched off back and forth, as I said. We spent a lot of time on 6 and 15. I think last year I, I did get a 15-meter CW contact. Now, it took a long time uh, with N4FR out of Tennessee, and I made contact with them again, but not on 15. Last year, the solar flux index was 76. This year, it was 72. And that's that's okay. Uh, if, if you're not making contacts, uh, check your antenna. I think that's the first place to start. I saw people using compromise antennas, and you're going to get compromised results. And so I've seen where people complain, oh, the bands were terrible this year. But it's probably the antenna. Um, I think that's first, then check mode. You're going to have more success on CW or digital, and then check your power. Those are just my thoughts, my opinions, having done QRP myself. I've made hundreds, maybe thousands of QRP contacts, and typically it's an antenna issue, I think. My friend did PSK31, and since FT8 wasn't available. And he did, he said that PSK31 was more busy or more activity than he's seen in a long, long time because so many people are moving over to FT8 and I guess FT4 now. But I'm certainly no digital expert. Uh, it's really nice to have home stations. Made a lot of contacts with home stations and I appreciate them. So any of you home stations out there, thank you. Of course, if it was just limited to us outdoor stations, um, it'd be a much smaller event. So I used the N3FJP software. I've used this for several years with the club, but I finally purchased it myself. Here's our map. This is really cool. This is one of the, with the functions, and you can see where we're shaded in. That's the contacts that we made. And everything in the middle... That's all. That was all 40 meters. 40 meters is turning into one of my favorites for field day, winter ants, and uh, regular ARR health field day. Because you can operate at night, and then it at night it expanded all the way into, I can't remember where we got at night, but the coast, certainly. My friend got Northwest Territories. How cool was that? And uh, I ended up getting Belize on I think it was 20 that was pretty cool uh, he called in tried to get Hawaii but no success there I spent too much time trying to get him a lot of people were trying to get him on 20 and then I got South Dakota finally finally got South Dakota on my own call sign that was really cool got both the Dakotas on 40 meters right there at the end so well one other cool thing was I was able to decode with my head what my friend FL Digi could not decode on CW. Sometimes he'd listen to me because he doesn't know CW and he'd, he'd listen. And I got some stations where they were so weak that he couldn't decode, but I was able to. I'm about to wrap this up, but I want to show you uh, some of the things the software does. It's really cool. So you can, you can go over... Um, each of these sections and then look down here in the bottom left and you can see what mode and what band so it's pretty darn cool and how many and then when you're putting them in if you put a call sign in like uh, K8UO was a big one it'll show you way down there if you can see it'll show you the bearing and the number of miles now it's it's propagating this these fields for me because I already I made contact with them. They were an 8 India station. That may have been the largest that I saw. There were a lot of uh, four. Four Oscar was quite common. And 
Well, I see a nine Oscar right there, South Florida. I forgot about them. There were sixes and nines, and I know at least a seven. So it was a lot of fun. Some of those stations must be really big. But one thing I wanted to show you, if you're not familiar with this, is you can graph it, and then you can look at your statistics. And so you can look down here and see how you did. Like op time, total op time, depending on the type of brakes. Now, we actually operate quite a bit less than that because we took small a lot of small breaks and then you can look down here and see how you did we ended up getting let's see six percent of our contacts we did about 150 a little uh, looks like 158 contacts and six percent were on 80 meters 68 on percent on 40 meters 25 percent on 20 meters and uh, one percent on six and those were the Sorry, I'm not doing a great job. And then you can see where it is. South Florida was our most significant section, followed by Alabama. Alabama. I like talking to those guys. And then you go down further and you can see your state. So Florida was our number one state with 12% of our contacts. And uh, California was 11%. California, boy, they were hot this year. And uh, Cal uh, we didn't get as many Canadians, but a lot more of the... Californians this year. So that was my field day. Hope you guys had fun. I'm going to cut it off here, but I just wanted to talk about some things I learned and uh, just some thoughts about field day.